Let's talk about this, the right thumb in the golf swing. Okay, so we're going to talk about the right thumb. And the reason I want to talk about that is I see a lot of people playing and they've got that right thumb right down the shaft. Now, it's not better players that do this. It's often beginners, intermediates. And pretty much whenever you see somebody do that, you can be guaranteed that they have a big slice. Because when you put that thumb on the shaft like that, you cannot help but use it. And that's one of the strongest parts of our body. That thumb, that thing is strong. And when you push that thumb down, that club cannot work the way it was meant to work. You're overcoming all of the inertia of the club head that needs to turn over as it goes through the ball. So what we need to do is remove that thumb from the shaft almost completely. You want your right thumb to be just barely touching that finger there, your index finger, and just slightly off center to the left, if you're a right-hander, of course, of the club. That way, the club can rotate properly as it moves through impact. With that thumb there, it pretty much locks your wrist into this position and doesn't allow the club face to turn over. In reality, both thumbs are really a problem because we don't really want to put any pressure downward with either thumb. I'm doing it with both here because that rushes the club head past the hands. And we never want that to happen. We want that club head to stay behind the hands as long as possible and then fly out at the very last second. That's how you get the most speed with the least effort, just as it would if you were throwing a golf club, you wouldn't ever throw the head first and then push the shaft. It just doesn't work that way. I'm gonna to try to not hit the camera here, but you would always extend your arms to their full point, then the club catches up and releases out of your hands. And if you have some old clubs like this one that you can actually practice throwing at the ground, that is a good example of how you want to swing a golf club. And you want the club, I can't do it here because of the camera, but you want the club to hit the ground just barely with the club head first. So you, you kind of want to think of it almost hitting the ground flat. And that would happen right about there, about maybe a foot behind the golf ball, but you're going to, let me see if I can do it this way. You're going to go out to a spot about there and you want that club head not to strike the ball, not to go that way, but you're going to throw it as much that way as you can. But you get the idea. So your hands have to get low long before the club is released. And, uh, that's quite a good method of learning how to actually deliver the club with the hands low enough so that the club is too long before it gets to the ball. Several people have asked me about the Holy Grail and where their imaginary ball should be. And almost everybody imagines it way too high. They imagine it way up here and by the time they get to the ball, they're flipping. But their ball should be way down here so that as the club is driven that way, the hands get driven to the left. And as the club catches up, you're in a forward press type of position. Um, if your ball isn't low enough, you 
will have to flip just to make the club long enough to reach the ball. What it should feel like is that your hands are too low and that you are going to crash into the ground, and you would if you weren't making a full swing. Um, and at full speed, your body's turning, your hands don't stop. So what, what is too low here is not too low there, right? So try that. Some of you may hit it fat at first, and of course you should. Because if you think about it, what is a fat shot? It's actually a really good swing, but you hit the ground before you hit the ball. So all you have to do is either learn to control that low point and move it forward slightly, or you've got the ball in the wrong position.